but they can't see me, right? Good morning. I understand you're watching the slideshow. Mr. Mark put up a slideshow. He said it's very short. He's been very busy. Um, but watch the pictures. We're going to let the pictures run for just a few minutes. If you're online and have logged on or whatever it is that you do, uh, type in a comment or just type in one of those little thumbs up emojis. Let us know who's there while you're watching the slides. Uh, I saw somebody's awesome tree frog, Sophie's awesome tree frog. Her dad posted a picture of it yesterday. And, oh, I'm seeing some of the slides. Mr. Mark turned the computer around so I can see what you guys are looking at. Oh, how cool. I'm seeing artwork from all these past weeks and such pretty faces. Oh, I remember when we used black paper and did silhouettes. Remember when we did watermelons and ants. You guys will have fun watching all these slides. So we're gonna let it run for just a minute or two and let everybody get logged on. Be sure and type in a comment and tell us who's there. I'm gonna see if Donovan types in first or Sophia or Casey or maybe Sarah Elizabeth. So we'll see who's going to log on first. Give us a thumbs up or type in a comment, tell us who you are. I think when we get thumbs up, we don't necessarily know who's out there giving us a thumbs up. Oh, I remember our little birds that we painted on their tree limbs. Remember we did a whole family of crazy birds. I just saw a very cool watermelon that had big chunks eaten out of it. And I see Nick working on silhouettes. So let us know who's there. Mr. Mark will kind of give me a head count when we know we got enough people logged on. We're going to do one last project today. Can't believe this is the last day, Larry Jansen. Oh, I know, Nick. Isn't it strange? It'll be really odd not to not to tune in on Monday. I next week I get to try to clean up in the studio from all our stacks of supplies and everything, so we can get ready for summer camp. Lydia and Patrick and Sarah Hi Lydia. Elizabeth. Hi Donovan, Patrick. Donovan. And Donovan's there. And Sarah Elizabeth's there. Your sister Sophie Safe is there. Oh, Sophie's there. Sophie, I loved your tree frog. I thought he turned out really awesome. Nick, you'll have to get mom to post me a picture of your tree frog. Did you do your tree frog yesterday? Uh, we're gonna let the slides and just think it's really cool for y'all to get to look back and see all this artwork. I just saw Bay holding her bird she painted. So some of you have done every one of these projects. I know Nick has. Um, I got Sophia and Casey Farron have been with me since day one, two. And Sarah Elizabeth's been with me since the very second week. So she's probably done almost every project we see going by in the slideshow. So we're going to watch the slideshow for just a few minutes here while everybody gets logged on. Um, we are going to do summer camp. Yay! We're, we've gone back and forth and looked at how to rearrange the studio so we can have a little more social distance between us, setting up separate workstations. We're severely limiting the number of people that can attend each summer camp week so we can space ourselves out and do the best we can. So we are going to have summer camps. We're going to get those posted in these next couple days so you'll have to watch. Mr. Mark will send out an email blast to all of you that have been doing Idea Studio Live with us. I'm gonna turn it off. Oh, Let Mr. Me. Mark's getting ready to end the slideshow. There you are, hi. Oh, look, I can see myself on the computer. Um, we're going to have a limited number in each summer camp, almost, but not quite half of what we usually have. So. He's going to send out an email blast to all of you that have been doing our activity bags with us and give you guys first crack at registering for one of the summer camp weeks. They'll fill up really fast because I think we'll only have 10, maybe 12. We haven't fi quite figured out if we can fit 12 in here or not. So we might only have 10 kids every week. So when you see an email blast, you'll want to pick out what weeks you want to come. We'll be doing some of our clay weeks. Those of you that I haven't met, like Sarah Elizabeth or Donovan, Clay can be frustrating when we were doing it online. When we're, when we're not there to really help and, and look at things, lots of things crumble, lots of things fall apart. When we do clay in summer camp, it's awesome. 
I mean, Nick's done summer camp clay with me before, and and usually we don't have any problems, right, Nick? Usually things turn out really, really well. So you'll have to look. Some of our summer camp weeks will be clay, and we'll do clay projects every day. And some of our weeks will be art weeks, and we'll be doing different art projects, just like we've been doing online here. So we won't repeat anything that we've done in these past 45 days. This will, this will make day 45 that we have done art projects together. How about that, Nick? You and I have done art projects for 45 days together. That's like a year and a half worth of weekly after school classes. So we are going to get ready to do a project today. Today, we, you should have one piece of paper left. You know, if everything goes the way it's supposed to, we are on our last piece of paper for our last class. This is one of the mixed media papers, so it should have a check mark on it if everything went right. Um, go ahead and, and keep your little piece of cardboard that everything's clipped to because we're going to use that for a straight edge today. And we're going to use our colored pencils. One last time using our colored pencils today and our Sharpie. So grab your Sharpie. And Nick, if you've got a little tiny bit of eraser left like I've got, we need our pencil and an eraser. Okay, so we're going to do kind of, it's kind of a cross between a colored pencil project with shading and kind of creating the illusion that we've got a, a crevice going right down the center of my paper here. Kind of reminded me of the Grand Canyon. Anybody ever been to the Grand Canyon? We took our boys there a while ago. And so I figured since most of us aren't going on vacations this summer um, and kind of staying close to home, we're going to create our own Grand Canyon. I actually did it with oranges, orange and greens, because I was kind of going for the look of the ground with Grand Canyon. But then I thought, how cool is it in just black and white? Doesn't this one look neat? This one, I just used my pencil, my number two lead pencil. And you can actually get some incredible shading with just using a pencil. I also went back in, see how the darks back here look even darker than the darks in the foreground? I actually added some black colored pencil with it. And then I looked to see what it would look like if I used my reds and browns and blacks like we did on our ice cream cone. So I'm gonna teach you about drawing our little Grand Canyon here on our paper. And we're gonna kind of use a vanishing point. And then we will decide what colors that we want to do. So, today's paper have a check mark on it. Today's paper should have a check mark on it. It's kind of the thinner piece of paper. And it should be the only piece of paper you've got left. So, if somehow you got mixed up, this will work fine on watercolor paper too. So, we should have one piece of white paper left. That's what we're going to use today. It should have a check mark on it. And so what I'm going to do is have Mr. Mark move the camera in so you guys will be able to see a little better. And I'm going to teach you how we're going to make our Grand Canyon on the piece of paper here. And we're going to create our own illusion that there's a, there's a rut going right down the middle of my paper. So let's see. Let Mr. Mark get all set here. Oh, got him the wrong way. We won't put this one over here. So I can draw on this one. And I'm going to put my straight edge over here. Okay, we've got these in a good spot, Mr. Mark, that everybody can see. And is this camera on over here too? Mm -hmm. So when I look up, I should look up here. Mr. Mark figured out how to give us two camera angles so you guys can actually see me when I'm always talking with my hands and, and I never had them down here where they were in camera range. But I got in such a habit of feeling like you were out there and looking at this camera that most of the time when I look up, I'm looking in the wrong place. So I will try to remember I'm going to look here when I'm talking to you. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use the paper vertical, straight up and down, so that we can get the most, the deepest, farthest, longest kind of Grand Canyon on our paper that we can. And I wanted you to look at a couple things before we start drawing. Let's put this one down here so you can see too. Okay, is this one still in? Yeah, oh look at that, I can look and see what I look like. How about that? Okay, this Grand Canyon, I get a lot of where this side of the ground goes in between. 
I kind of like when they're spaced apart like that. It looks a little easier to see. This is when they're in between. This one, I kind of like my yellow one. It kind of got spaced apart a little bit more. So you kind of see more of the, the Grand Canyon looks wider in places. Grand Canyon's gonna look narrowest if we get our little curves going right across from each other. And my black one, I really, I think this might be my favorite one. I really like how the shading worked in here. And sometimes our little curves get close to each other and sometimes they're further apart. Kind of like when they're a little further apart, okay? So the way we're gonna start, I'm gonna put this one back up here, okay? The way we're gonna start is we're gonna take your piece of cardboard that all your paper was clipped to and we're gonna use it as a straight edge. And the first thing we're gonna do is give ourselves a horizontal line. We want our Grand Canyon to look like it's disappearing off into the distance. I don't wanna go all the way to the top of my paper. And so I'm gonna use my straight edge here. I'm going to pick a spot kinda of near the top I'm going to leave a little bit of space like this. So I'm going to come down a little ways on the top of my paper and I'm going to lay the cardboard down here. I want to line it up on the side so I get a nice horizontal line. There we go. Okay, so line it up on the side and then I'm just going to draw lightly. Try to draw lightly with your pencil because we want to be able to erase the pencil lines and have them not show. So make a line come across here like this. I'm gonna press a little harder so you can see my lines, okay? So this is where the Grand Canyon's gonna disappear into the distance, okay? Now what I want you to do is find the middle of the paper. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna say if I looked at my paper here, what do you guys think? About there, does that look like about the middle of the paper? I can kind of do this with my fingers and double check. This is about the middle of the paper, middle of the paper going this way, okay? So find the middle of your paper. And what we wanna do is lay the cardboard down. We're gonna draw a line right down the middle. So I'm going to say right about there, looks like the middle. I'm gonna give myself a little point. I'm gonna lay my cardboard down. I can line this edge up with the horizontal line that I just made, okay? So I've got this edge lined up with that line I made. Here's the middle of my paper. I'm going to draw a line right down the middle. Okay? So we should have a giant T on our paper. It would match Sophia's last name, Theron, or it matches Miss Jenny's last name, Taylor. So we got a giant T. We're going to give ourselves a few diagonal lines on here. Now, what I want you to watch is, see how my Grand Canyon got so close in the middle? Looks really narrow. Most of my loops came back when we draw, I'll show you, but most of them came back to this center. Now if we want to open it up, we want some of the loops to stay further away from the center, okay? First thing we're going to do is give ourselves two diagonal lines. That's going to give us this shape. We want it to look like it gets skinnier as it goes off into the distance. Remember when we drew our giant trees that we did seasons around and they were fat at the bottom and they got skinnier as they went. Our canyon's gonna be fatter at the bottom and get skinnier as it goes up. So here's our middle point at the top of the T. I want you to lay your cardboard down. We're gonna draw a diagonal line from this point to this corner, okay? I'm just gonna put my cardboard down there. So it's right on that point and then I wanna move it so it goes from this corner of the paper up to the corner, the center of my letter T. And I'm gonna put a diagonal line there, okay? See my diagonal line? Going right from the middle of my letter T here, right to the corner of my paper. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side here. So I'm gonna lay my cardboard down. I wanna go from the center of my letter T, then I wanna line it up so it goes down here to this corner of the paper doesn't have to be perfect. These are just guidelines. They're not going to be part of our drawing. They're going to kind of be like a guideline. Remember when we drew our ice cream cone the other day and we gave ourselves a big triangle on top of the cone and it kind of helped us guide all our swirls of ice cream so it ended up sort of in a triangle shape. These are just guidelines like we did on our ice cream cone so that um, 
it's going to help guide us where we want to go. Okay? So has everybody got their T? And we've got our two diagonal lines. Give us a thumbs up. Let Mr. Mark know us if everybody is just about ready. I'm going to show you how we're going to make our Grand Canyon here. Okay, we're going to start up here where our Grand Canyon vanishes off into the distance. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one side of my Grand Canyon first. And I'm going to draw all these swirly little lines. Now, if you look at my Grand Canyon, most of the time it's got a skinny curve. I'm not making real big wide circle size curves. I'm making skinny oval curve and then I'm coming back kind of on a horizontal. Okay? I don't want to go down on a diagonal. Most of my, I get a skinny swirl and it comes back. I get another skinny swirl. Go back. So we're going back and forth and back and forth. Kind of in a horizontal. See how the sides all kind of follow a horizontal. They can slope a little bit, make a little bit of a diagonal, but they're not going to be coming back like this. Okay? And look at the ends of all my little tops of the Grand Canyon here. They're pretty skinny ovals, aren't they? Look at the oval, the skinny curve back here, and then compare it to these big curves down here. The closer we get to the bottom of the paper, the bigger we can make our curves. Okay? So I'm going to start up here. This is where I'm vanishing off into the distance, and I'm going to make this side first. I'm going to make the right-hand side first. So I'm going to start with making a skinny curve up here. So I'm going to start my point. I'm going to come over here and make a skinny curve and come back this way. So start right up here in your center, curve out and curve back, kind of like we made a letter J. Okay? I kept this curve curve very tiny. Things in the distance, we want them to look smaller, skinnier, darker. That all helps us give the illusion of depth in our picture. Okay, so I came back here. Let's make this one come way back here and I'll make another curve. Come up here and make another curve. Let's make this curve come over the center line there. Let's make a real short curve here. Make a bigger one down there. Your curves don't have to go exactly where mine went, but here's what I want you to do. Don't make the curves next to each other the same length. Like, I don't want this curve to be the same length as this curve. We want them to be different lengths coming towards the center. So look and make sure that each one looks a little different. They all, all of my curves look about the same width this way, don't they? And you know me, I don't like things to look too much the same. So I might go in and decide I want this curve to be a little fatter. Let's, let's change that one a little bit. So this is fun. You can go in and give your Grand Canyon a little plastic surgery. Pretend like, you know, it's been another thousand years and the water eroded it in a little different shape there. Okay, these kind of line up the same, so I might make this one. I might make this one be just a little shorter. And let's see how I'm going to like that. Okay, I'm not going to fiddle too much with this side till I put my other side on. And then I'm going to show you how we make the, the straight up and down cliffs. And then that's a good time to decide if you want to change things. Okay, so has everybody got one side? It kind of looks like... I don't know what's it kind of look like. Kind of looks like we got a EKG going in the hospital here. Okay, are you ready to do the other side? <clears throat> I miss Jenny can't drink water. Okay, the other side we're going to start up here at the center, at this vanishing point at the middle of our T. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to come up here where we started. From this one little point, we're going to start at the same point. And look at how narrow this is. I want to keep it really close together back here at the at the back part. And then I'm not going to get too far away with my first loop because I want this to look very skinny going back there. That helps give the illusion that we're going far away. Okay? So I'm going to start at this point here. I'm going to come around it. I'm going to stay pretty close to it. 
and I'm going to put a little skinny loop right in there. And then we can just start adding more loops. I'm kind of following this diagonal down. Okay. We want some of them to come close to the center, but some of them stay further apart. I want my loops to stay on this side of my diagonal. So I got one little loop here. Let's go back a little bit. Don't make your loops go right across. We kind of want the loops to go in between these loops. Does that make sense? So I don't want this loop to come and, and butt right up next to this loop, okay? So think of when I put another loop on, I want it to kind of go in between these loops. And then some can go way over the center line and some can stay further back here. Look, my Grand Canyon got lots of space down here in the front. Got a little closer together up here. And I don't really know what it's gonna look like till we put the sides of the cliffs on. Now here's where you gotta listen. All these little loops we made, where they come out to the skinny little oval loop, that's where we're going to put a line for the side of the cliff coming down. And what I want you to do is, it might get a little confusing with those diagonal lines on there, we're gonna make these lines come straight down, straight down like this center line. They're not gonna be on an angle, they're gonna drop straight down from where you have a skinny little oval. So we're gonna start here at the top, and just like I did, we'll start on this side, on the right side. It's easier to do one side at a time. So when I looked at here, the skinny loops that stick out into the middle of the Grand Canyon, that's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna come, my first skinny loop is actually right back here. I'm gonna go from my skinny loop and I'm gonna make a vertical line come straight down till it bumps into something. So if I came on here, here's my first skinny loop. We're just doing this side first, okay? These are the skinny loops poking, poking out into the middle of the Grand Canyon. So here's my first one. I'm gonna make a straight line coming right straight down from the point of my skinny loop. And I'm gonna make my straight line go right down till it bumps into something, okay? It wasn't very long. It bumped into that pretty fast. So if I'm staying on this side of the Grand Canyon, my next loop po poking out into the middle would be this one, right? I'm gonna draw a straight line. I'm gonna find the point, the farthest point out of this little skinny loop. And I'm gonna draw a line straight down from it until it bumps into something, then I stop. Okay? Now, staying just on this side, next skinny loop poking out will be this one, right? So I'm gonna come out to the end of my skinny loop and I'm gonna drop a vertical line straight down till it bumps into something. See how I'm starting to get the sides of my Grand Canyon here? So I did this one, my next one sticking out on this side would be this one. And I'm going to make a straight line. Oh goodness, it's not bumping in, it's not bumping in, it's not bumping in, it's not bumping in. It's gonna go all the way down there. That's pretty cool. Okay. Now it's still looking a little strange. Just give it a few minutes. Next skinny loop sticking out into the middle of the Grand Canyon would be this one, right? We're not doing anything with these loops sticking out on this side, only the ones sticking into the center. So here's my next one. I come out to the end of the skinny loop and I drop a vertical line straight down till it bumps into something. See how these lines are parallel to the center line? They're exactly the same, nice straight up and down. They match, okay? And I've got one more big loop sticking into the middle of the Grand Canyon on this side. That would be this one, and so I'm gonna go straight down, okay? Now, we can stop right now and go ahead and erase this diagonal line the more lines on the paper, sometimes it just makes it start to get confusing, doesn't it? So I'm gonna go along here before I move over to my other side. I'm gonna erase this diagonal line. Don't erase any of your straight lines. But I think the more extra lines, the more confusing it sometimes gets. 
Okay, so I erased my diagonal line there. Okay, I got one side of the Grand Canyon going here. Now we want to come over on the other side of the Grand Canyon, and we're going to do the same thing we did over here. We're going to find all the skinny little loop ends that are sticking into the middle of the Grand Canyon. So I'm going to come up here to the top. Where's my first one? That one's sticking on the outside. So first one, here it is. And you know what's going to get confusing is this center line of our big letter T we made. So I'm actually going to go erase that. Before we start making the sides on this side, I'm going to erase that middle line. Otherwise, it's going to get hard to tell where my sides of my cliff are and where my letter T is. Okay, so I took out that center line. Oh, that makes life much easier. Now it's not quite so confusing. Put any pencil lines back on that, that got erased by your big fat eraser. This is an advantage, Nick. You and I, we have tiny itty bitty erasers. You can erase in more places. Okay, so I wanted to come up here and find the very first little skinny loop sticking into the middle of the Grand Canyon. Come out here to the edge of the skinny oval and we're gonna drop a line straight down till it bumps into something. There we go, I have to stop right there, it bumped in. Okay, next skinny loop, do the same thing. Right from the end, drop a vertical line straight down. Next skinny loop will be this guy. Oh my gosh, look at this guy. He's gonna drop really far. So I'm gonna keep going down. I can use this as a guideline. So I stay nice and straight. I want it to look parallel to that line. I'm gonna keep going down, 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 down. Oh, finally, if it bumped into down here, okay? That was this loop. Next loop would be this one. So right from the end, I'm gonna put a vertical line going down. Are my vertical lines staying vertical? I have a harder job because I'm drawing from the side. So sometimes they might start looking a little wonky. Okay, here's my next loop. I'm gonna make a, a vertical line come straight down and it goes all the way to the bottom of the paper. Here's my next one and it's going to go straight down to the bottom of the paper. And that's it. Did I get them all? I did, didn't I? So I've got them all on there. I got a really tall cliff, a couple really tall cliffs coming along in here. This is a pretty tall cliff too. Now, here's where you look at it and you go, I don't really like this really tall cliff here right next to this really tall cliff here. I don't really like that part. Do you? No. Oh, Mr. Mark likes it. Well, this is where, take. I've got to turn mine this way so I can really see it. This is where, take a look at it, decide if you like it, decide if you don't really, I kind of, here's one of my favorite spots. I like this short little cliff that's in here and then this one gets bigger sticking out here. I like this little short cliff there. But I don't like how close these two cliffs get to each other. So if you don't like something, what would make this cliff not so close to this cliff? If I scooted it back a little bit. So see, I could come in and I can change my little oval loop and shorten it up a little bit. So if you want to change anything around, now's the time to do it. And you can just look at where your cliff ended. If you don't like where it ended, change it around a little bit. Let me turn it this way. So now I'm still going to have my nice long cliff here. Oh, but almost lines right up with that cliff. Maybe, what do you think? That gets really funny right there. Almost looks like the canyon's closed up right there. Maybe, maybe I want to cut this one off. If I made this cliff come out a little further, it would cut this guy off, wouldn't it? So how about if we just barely cut him off there. I think I like that better. And that's all the changes I'm going to do. We're going to let the Grand Canyon go and put some color on it. I'm going to bump this cliff out a little further though. I think I like it better. And that means this really tall cliff is going to end right here because it's going to bump into this one. So it's going to end right there. And then this one's still going to be close to that one. Maybe I need to shorten this guy a little bit. 
Okay, Miss Jenny's got to quit fiddling with it. We're just going to let it be. So this guy is here. I got to put his side on. And then I got to give this guy his side. So it's going to come down like that. There we go. Okay, I got my Grand Canyon ready to go. Have you got your Grand Canyon ready to go? I'm going to erase this other diagonal line here. Although we could use our Sharpie first and then erase then we won't be erasing the pencil lines so easily okay so i'm going to use my sharpie just to draw my outlines here and then we're going to shade and you could shade with yellows and browns and blacks you could shade with this is using the orange and the brown and the black you could even shade with just your pencil if you really like just my black and white here but we're going to talk about how to shade to create that illusion of depth We've got depth going down in the canyon, and we've got depth going far away in the canyon. So I'm going to start up here with the lines that I drew and just go over them with my Sharpie so they're easy to see. Don't worry if your Sharpie doesn't go exactly over the lines. to this one and back. So make your curvy line first. I'm going to go over here and make this curvy line next. There we go. Okay, so got my, right now it looks like a river. We want to give it that depth like the Grand Canyon. That's when we come in here and we come from the skinny point of our ovals. Draw our straight lines that come down till they bump into something. This one is a really long cliff. This one comes down like that. Then I come over here and do this side. So this one comes down till it bumps in. This one comes down till it bumps in. This one comes down till it bumps in. That one bumps in. That one bumps in. Oh, I forgot this one right there. And then we got to put this one on. Okay. Now, it gets a little confusing looking at it. That's where our shading helps. Right now, we got lines going all over the place. You kind of look at it and your eyes can just go wobbly looking at it. So starting to put some shading in helps us see the different shapes. When I put my shading in, all of a sudden I can see the sides of the cliff and look at where we're gonna shade the darkest. When something's far, far, far away, we can do it two, two different ways. Usually if something's very far away, it's either dark, 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 really far away, and the closer it gets to you, it gets lighter, or it can be vice versa. Sometimes really close to you in a picture is in a dark shadow and the farther away it gets, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter till it fades away, okay? So sometimes we're either dark and you get light or light and you get dark. It's one or the other. We don't wanna be the same darkness all the way to the foreground because that doesn't give you your depth. The other thing, there's a couple other things that give you depth, making something very tiny if you were going to draw a tree back here and a tree up in the front, the tree back here is going to be really, really tiny compared to the tree in the front. And the, the size and shape of something gives your picture depth. So far away, we want to be really small and we want to be darker in this picture. So when we shade, we're going to be shaded darker overall back here. See how I hardly have any white paper showing back in here? When you look at the sides of the cliffs back here and then look at the sides of the cliffs up in the front see how light they get i actually left a lot of white paper so the lighter in the foreground darker back here but even back where you're going to be dark you don't want it to be solid dark all the way across we want to see where it would be the lightest a little lighter shade so we're going to start by pressing really hard back here get a little lighter little lighter little lighter as we go out okay so, my Sharpie has sat up for a minute. Remember how you never want to erase Sharpie the second you finish. You want to give it like a minute. So, I'm going to come in here and erase all my lines. 
so my pencil lines don't get in the way of all my pretty shading. I'm going to leave this horizontal line the top of our T. That's going to kind of be my horizon line and remind me where to put a little ground up here on the top. So come along here and erase all your pencil lines. Your Sharpie should be nice and set up by now. If you didn't erase all your diagonal lines, this is a good time to do that too. We're making all kinds of fuzzies from our eraser. This might just do our erasers in, Nick. This might be the end of that little eraser. We'll have to get new ones. But they lasted just about all 45 lessons, did they? Do you still have a little bit of eraser, Nick? Mine's pretty well, pretty small. Okay, I've got all my pencil lines erased. I left my top of my letter T is my little horizon line up there. So I got all this erased. Please don't dump it on mom's floor. I'm gonna tap it off on my table up here. I can flick it with my knuckle like that and get all of that eraser stuff off. Okay, you ready? Now, I did an orange, brown, and black one. Kinda like, it looks like green grass. Kinda looks like the Grand Canyon, sort of. I really like my pencil one here. Um, but I thought maybe I'd try one more color. So you guys can see if you want to do like oranges, browns, blacks, and then we could you could use a little green for grass. If you want to do yellows and browns, like we did our ice cream cone, you'd start with your yellow. Here you're going to start with your orange. Here you're going to start with just your number two pencil. It really gives a cool look. And you could do this on another piece of paper if you want to try that later. I'm going to try the blue and see what it looks like with blues because we've got a light blue and I've got a dark blue and then I could use some black to get really dark, okay? So what you want to do when you're shading the Grand Canyon here is we want to start with our lightest color. So if you're doing oranges, start with your orange. You got to look on the pencil and make sure it says orange, not red orange. If you want to start with these kind of colors, you want to start with your yellow. I'm going to start with my light blue here. And we're going to start back here at the back. Oh, you know what? Look at look at me. I forgot one line. Here's my skinny little oval sticking out. It needs its little vertical line coming down from it. There we go. There we go. So actually, when I'm looking at this side of this cliff, all of this right down to there is part of this cliff right here. Look at that. All of that. Okay, so I'm going to start with my lightest color that I'm going to use. So if you're doing blues, get your light blue and then have your dark blue ready. I'm going to come back here in this crevice and I'm going to press really hard with my light blue. I'm going to fill that all in very dark, that little bit that's on the other side of this cliff. So there's so little there, it's going to be very dark. Now. This is my first cliff that I'm really going to color in, right? The side of the cliff. We're looking at doing the vertical parts of our Grand Canyon. So if I was looking at this as the side of a cliff, where is it going to be the darkest? It's going to be the darkest back in this skinny little corner. When things get skinny, they get more shadow cast on them. So it's going to be really dark back here. And then the side of the cliff that goes way, way down to the bottom of the canyon it's not gonna get as much light down there. So it's gonna be dark here, and it's gonna be dark here, and it's gonna be lightest as it comes out to the edge of the wall here. So I'm gonna start at this back corner, and I'm pressing as hard as I can with my blue. And then I'm going to loosen the grip. Remember how we've talked about when you're holding your pencil really hard and you're pressing really hard. And if you wanna press not so hard, make your fingers ease up a little bit on your pencil. So come, as I come across here, I want to get just a little lighter. I really don't want to see white paper way back here at the back of the canyon though. But see how much lighter I am here than I am back here? We don't want to see stripes, so you want to very gradually ease up on the pencil. So it gets a little lighter, a little lighter down here is going to be darker on this cliff than up near the top, right? So I'm going to keep it a little deeper tone right in here. I'm not pressing as hard as I can anymore though. And I'm going to let it get a little lighter up here at the top. So I'm pressing very lightly right here. 
right up at the top of this cliff and I'm gonna press really light. But then as I'm coming down into the canyon again, I'm gonna get a little darker. I can skip right down here to the bottom of this cliff. This is where I'm gonna press as hard as I can, right down here in the bottom. This is where no sunlight's getting into the bottom of my canyon here. Then as I come up the side of the wall here, it's gonna get a little lighter. A little bit lighter. So this is gonna be the lightest area on my wall. Okay. Now, I did not leave the white of my paper by itself because this is way back at the back of the canyon. The lightest parts I want to be up here. So I'm gonna color all that cliff wall in. I'm gonna skip down here to this one next. So darkest part of this one would be down here where this cliff is in front of it casting a shadow and back here in the corner, it's gonna be dark. It's gonna be lightest up here at the top. So I'm gonna press really dark where I want it the darkest. So I'm gonna come all the way along there. That's my really dark. Then I'm gonna ease up on my pencil a little bit. So it gets a little lighter as it comes up. So ease up a little bit, ease up a little bit. Since this is next to the back, I'm still gonna color the whole thing in, but I'm gonna press really, really lightly. Now I want this clip to show up in front of here. So I make sure you've pressed as hard as you can in this area. So these cliffs in front of it, you can see them. And then we'll be able to make that a little darker with the dark blue and the black. So I'm gonna skip down here. Here's this giant cliff that I see going all the way down to the bottom of the canyon. So it's gonna be dark back in its corner and it's gonna be dark down here because it's got all these other cliffs block the sunlight. So I'm gonna come down and start at the bottom of this giant cliff here. And I'm pressing as hard as I can with the blue. So this is if you were using orange, you'd be pressing as hard as you can, or the yellow. And I'm gonna keep it dark kind of all the way up to about here. Okay, that's gonna let these cliffs on either side of it kind of pop. And I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna start in this little corner. Remember back here at these back corners is where it's dark and a little darker alongside here because this cliff's in front of it casting a shadow. Nothing's casting a shadow on that part, so I'm gonna leave that part kind of light. There's my darkest parts of that cliff. Now I wanna ease up. We got a lot more openness in the Grand Canyon here, so I'm gonna see more light, so I might even keep just a little white of my paper showing on this one. So I'm holding my pencil much more loosely now. And I'm gonna skip down and come up from here. So I gotta press a little darker. We don't wanna see a line where one darkness stops and it starts getting lighter. So see if you can gradually ease up on your pencil so we don't see a line. And I've met right here. Got a little dark going right here from this being in front of it. And then I'm gonna let this be really, really light as it comes across here. I might even leave some of the white of the paper right out there at the edge. I'm gonna leave a little white of the paper. I can always go back and add more color. It's a little harder to go back and take color off and I need to get myself a little sharpener. Um, Mark, can you breathe? They're in there though. Or there might be one there with the erasers. Ah, I got all my helpers today. They're gonna go get me a sharpener. See my colored pencil? <laughs> Look at that. I've pretty much worn it down to a nub, haven't I? Thank you. So, I'm gonna sharpen my pencil just a little bit here. I'm kind of running out of blue and I want to show you what, how we're going to finish up. There we go. Got a little bit more color showing. Okay, so I left actually left a little white there. So I'm going to come in here to my next cliff. I find it easier to go down one side and then I'll go over and do the other side. These cliffs are out here in the open. They're in the foreground. I want them to be a lot lighter. So I'm going to look at just where would you see shadow here. A little bit back in this corner, but not nearly as much as here. So I'm just gonna put a little dark right back there and a little dark right down at the bottom of the cliff. 
okay? But I just put a little bit. And then I'm going to come in here and start easing up so it gets a lot lighter. I want these to be a lot lighter. So halfway across, I want to be almost as light as the paper. Coming halfway across, I want to be almost lightened up to the white of the paper. So I'm going to get a little lighter here. I'm going to let the white of the paper all the way down the front side of this cliff. So along in here, I'm just going to press lightly. And then right here, I want it to get really light. So I'm just going to barely go across the end of it. Really, 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 really light. That makes that cliff really pop out in front here, doesn't it? There we go. Okay. This one, same way. Just a little bit down here at the bottom. Back in this corner and a little bit at the bottom. And then it's going to lighten up a whole bunch. So I'm going to leave on like half of this cliff with almost just white paper. Put a little color right under the rim here, very lightly. A little bit of color down here at the bottom. And then leave that white of that paper. See how light these cliffs are looking and how deep these are back here. So this is one way. When we start looking, I might come up here and even deepen that a little bit right in through there. Deepen this one a little bit more. So see how we're getting that stepping back feeling from our shadows and over here I'm going to keep the front side of this cliff really light. I'm not going to press hard on any part of this. Just really really light. Okay so we got really really light as we're going back. I'm going to do the same thing over here. This one's going to be a little deeper tones like this back here. So start at the back. Now this is at the back and here not on the top. These are the top sides and it's the bottom side that would get a little more shadow on it. So on here, I'm gonna press harder over more of the cliff. How are you guys doing? I color very fast when I'm coloring. And you know what I do? I'm trying not to really see any specific lines when I'm coloring here. I'm just looking for the shadows and the shading and the color. So I'm actually making, when I'm coloring, I'm making tiny, tiny little circles like this with my pencil. Instead of trying to draw perfect lines here, I'm just kind of going around and around and around with my pencil like this. It's a great way to shade without having any specific lines. Okay, so I kept my dark down here at the bottom, back here in this corner, but my dark, I'm pressing really, really hard here. It comes almost halfway across this cliff. Remember back here, we don't really want to leave any white of the paper. I pressed really lightly, but I covered up all the paper. Let's do this guy here. We'll get some dark back here in the corner and along its bottom here. Keep this corner back here a little dark. So look, I've pressed as hard as I can almost a third of the way up this, this cliff here because I want it to look a little farther away. And I'm going to start pressing a little bit lighter. I'm kind of leaning my colored pencil on its side. Makes it a little easier when you're, when you're using it straight up and down with its point. It's kind of hard to get some shading done. So I kind of lay the pencil on its side a little bit. And I'm barely pressing, barely pressing as my cliff gets out here to the edge. Now, since I want this cliff to look like it's behind this one sticking out in front of it, I'm going to come give it a little more shadow coming up. Sometimes putting a shadow on something in back of something else See how I put more shadow on this and it makes the thing in front of it pop out more. That makes this cliff more noticeable because I put shadow on the cliff behind it. So sometimes instead of looking to, at how to shade an object, you look at how to shade an object that's behind it. And that kind of sets that object in front of it off. Okay, definitely look like I got darker so I went back here. Let's do this one would be dark back here in its corner. 
where this clips in front of it. And I got a little bit dark here too. Okay, I want to start, that's going to be the last one I press this hard on because I want to start getting lighter in the foreground. So we're going to leave some white space out here. And so gradually, I want to get a little lighter here as it comes out to the front of the canyon, the front of the cliff in the canyon. And let's leave a little bit of white right out here on the front. There we go. We'll do the same thing here. I'm just going to put a little dark at the back. But then I'm just loosening up and not pressing so hard. I want this clip to look a lot lighter. And I'll do the same thing on this one, just a little bit of dark back here. Not pressing all the way hard. And then lighten it up as it comes across. And lighten, I'm barely touching the paper now. Barely touching the paper. You can hardly even see my blue, right? And I'm gonna leave it really white out there at the front. I gotta get down here. This cliff's in front of it down here, so I'm gonna press not as hard as I can, but just a little deeper right in here. I'm not pressing as hard as I can, but just a little harder. And then as it rounds the corner out here, I'll get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter till I'm hardly touching. Okay, so this got really light. It got a little deeper back here so this cliff can look like it's in front of it. So I'm just, on this cliff, I'm just gonna put a little dark blue back in the corner and lighten up and lighten up and barely pressing and barely pressing and barely pressing. There we go, so I'm really, really light down here. I get into some deeper tones back there. And with just the light blue, it's kind of starting to look like it goes down inside, doesn't it? But it needs just a little more oomph. So I'm gonna use my dark blue. Not going to use my dark blue everywhere. I'm gonna think of using it where I press the hardest. I wanna go in with the dark blue where I press the hardest. I don't want to cover the whole thing. This little crevice back here, I can cover that whole thing. But I just, I want to do like half the area where I pressed hard with the light blue. About half of that, I'm going to press some dark blue in there. Same thing with the dark blue. You want to ease up as you come out. You don't want it to look like you put a stripe of dark blue there. I'm going to get some dark blue right down into this deep part of the canyon here. I'm kind of liking the blue. I think the blues look kind of pretty together. What do you think? Looks nice. Okay, see how just looking at those couple little spots, see how it makes that look so much deeper and farther away than just these spots in the foreground? So we can use this dark blue to really help emphasize the dark parts we did with the light blue. Same thing, I pressed as hard as I can with the dark blue at the back, but then I started easing up with the dark blue and I only wanna cover about half the dark area I did with the light blue. So the dark blue, I don't wanna cover the whole area where I pressed hardest with the light blue, just part of it. And let's do a little bit over here. We don't wanna overdo our extra dark spots because we want to save them to create that really deepest darkest spots so I think I might just put a little bit right there and maybe since this cliff goes this is so narrow down in here we could add a little bit down in here
There we go. Maybe put a little bit right here so that cliff gets in front a little bit more. There we go. So I used my dark glue just in a few places to really emphasize the dark. And then I'm going to take my black. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to keep them just way back here. I'm not going to do these down here. So these down here, I didn't get any dark, dark blue. In here, I got little bits of dark, dark blue. Then I used more dark, dark blue up here. I'm going to use my black just up in here. So this little far away spot, I'm going to add black. I'm going to put just a little bit. I'm almost just at the edge using the black, black. I'm not even coloring as much of area as I did with the dark blue. Just a little bit back in these spots where it's darkest. Here's our dark, dark spot here. So we'll add a little black in there and right up in front. I'm even pressing lighter with my dark black here. Just because it's black, I don't have to press hard. Pressing a little lighter as it comes up. And that really made that back part of my canyon go far away, didn't it? I might put a little bit right here. And a little bit on this side. What do you think? A little bit down in this corner. And I think that's all I'm going to do with my black. This kind of bothers me in here. If I had to do it over again, I would probably draw this a little differently. So I didn't have that long cliff. But see how it now really sinks back into my paper? The only other thing that I think would be cool to do is give just a little color on this horizontal ground. This is your flat ground where the canyon's sunk in. And so maybe I'll use my purple. Is this purple? Nope, that's my blue. Here's my purple. I'm going to take a, a, a different color, and I'm just pressing lightly, and I'm pressing in horizontal lines so they run parallel to the horizon here. And I'm going to think of putting color right in the little narrow ovals that we made. I'm not pressing as hard as I can. And I'm just going to pull it out so it's horizontal lines pressing about medium where it gets near the edge of the Grand Canyon and then really light. So I'm not pressing as hard as I can. Over here, kind of press medium and then really as light as you can in some horizontal lines. I don't want my lines to follow the curve of the canyon. I want my lines to look straight across like the flat ground. Let's put a little bit in here. I'm only pressing about medium there. And then when it comes out like this, I can pull it out in horizontal lines. You really, I really don't want to draw around these back ends. Just in this part that's towards the center of the canyon. And give some horizontal lines. This kind of emphasizes the horizontal flat ground and that this stuff goes down inside. Put a little bit of purple ground here. This must be on a, another planet. I've got a, a blue canyon with purple ground. There we go. Maybe a little bit on this one. Okay. You don't have to do this in all of it. You can if you want. If you do some more down in here, you just want to keep it really, really light closer we get to the foreground, the lighter you want everything to be. And I'm not pressing as hard as I can even back here. These are just kind of like pressing medium. So you could do some really, really light if you wanted. And not even press medium. Put a little bit barely color there. Put a little bit of purple ground down here. And that might be all I'm going to do. Okay, I kind of like my, my blue and purple canyon. It kind of looks like we've got a hole going down into the paper, doesn't it? So there's our last lesson in shading.
this was you can tell I finished one I made two more just because I was having fun doing this this is, this is kind of fun you can come up with all kinds of different designs try different colors this would work on any kind of piece of paper that you find today in your house um, I guess I could now we want it to go off this way um, you can just use a piece of copy paper and try this and try some different colors use up all your colors of your colored pencils try every color combination you can think of and there's our last lesson uh, we need to get our big pot and draw one more name I've got my list of names here that we've been drawing through our, our weeks of online classes so we'll be going in and putting a credit next to all of these names so if you go on to register for summer camp it will give you $25 off your summer camp so we'll draw one more name. Yesterday we drew Lydia. And Mr. Mark's got my big pot here. Ah, oh, Mr. Mark, thank you. Okay. Okay, let's see if I got names left in here. And then watch for our email. Mr. Mark's gonna send out an email blast when we have summer camp on the calendar. And you'll want to, to look at your summer and look at what weeks you've got and sign up quickly because we're only going to have um, a number each week. Okay, let's see if I can, got one. Let's see what name I've got here. Ava, Ava McCone. Um, Ava's been here for summer camp in the past and I've seen her come pick up her bag almost every week. I think I saw mom pick up one week. So Ava, we just drew your name out. I'm gonna put your name up here on this list and that means um, that you'll have $25 credit for summer camp. Watch for our email blast that Mr. Mark will send out and you'll want to go in and tag. We'll give you guys a few days before then we advertise to the general public. So you guys will get first choice to go find a week and get signed up. So you'll want to do that quickly. We'll have limited numbers. And I'm really looking forward to meeting. I feel like I know some of you. Sarah Elizabeth, I'd love to have you come to summer camp and Donovan and Sterling and all these kids, Millie and Effie. I've got all kinds of families that we all kind of feel like we know you. Alec and Matthew and Jonathan. We've got a family just like me. I have three boys too. Um, so we've met all kinds of new people. I've just never seen you. I feel like I, I know you through the camera. So watch for our email blast and sign up to come to summer camp so I can meet you in person. Like Sterling, when you picked up your bag, he came and met me in person from the curb. So we will be looking forward to seeing you this summer. And thank you for joining us. Take some pictures of your Grand Canyon and post them and put at Idea Studio. And this is our last lesson. So I'll see you this summer. Bye. Done. <laughs> I like the one nice thing about the phone was it big.